The fatal crash of Virgin Galactic's Spaceship Two on a test flight over California has shocked the space industry and thrown into doubt the whole future of space tourism. To discuss these issues, I'm joined in the FT studio by David Clements, a space physicist at Imperial College London. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. We've already heard a lot of speculation about what might have caused this tragedy, from problems with the rocket and its fuel to something going wrong with the tail. I think, rightly, Sir Richard Branson has attacked people who leapt to premature conclusions. Is there anything we can say at this stage, do you think? Well, it really is too early to speculate. There's an awful lot of work that needs to be done by people who are very skilled engineers, who are experts in looking at the results of accidents like this. And that work grinds exceeding finely before they come up with a definitive answer. Yes, it could be months, Absolutely. even a year or yeah. so. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's obviously a huge setback for Virgin Galactic and Richard Branson. How much of a setback is it, do you think, for the whole space tourism industry? Because Virgin Galactic was so much the standard bearer, the leader of this movement. Yeah, Virgin Galactic has, has been the most visible, but there are quite a number of other companies and, and groups of people working towards this and have been for quite some time. It certainly put a dent in the public perception of space tourism as, as something as cheap and well, maybe not cheap, but certainly as easy as climbing onto a 747. What this tragic accident really shows is, is or, or just confirms to people who, who pay attention anyway, is that this is not a risk-free business, and never has been. And anybody who's been prepared, like, for, for example, the people who've gone up to the International Space Station, um, on some of the rather more expensive space tourism tickets. Yes, tens of millions Absolutely. of dollars each. Anybody who's done that or has stumped up a ticket for, for Virgin Galactic or any of the other outfits, they will have done their, their research, they'll have done their due diligence, and they will know that this is not a risk-free business, I'm quite sure. Well, what is a reasonable level of risk? Is it something like one in 50, one in 100 of dying as on manned space flight to the shuttle? Is it one in several million for a transatlantic flight? What's the right balance between risk, excitement and safety? Because that's what we're really talking about. If you compare this to climbing Everest, for example, um, the death rate of doing that is, is not small. Uh, but people still do it. And I think the people who are interested in space tourism, who want to go into space, will look at the balance once things go into operation um, we'll look at the balance of risks and make the calculation and the de decision for themselves. Beyond the science, the reason people are going up for tourism or other reasons is something to do with the human spirit and what memorably NASA called in the 1960s the manifest destiny of humankind. Yes, and the, the reasons for people doing individual space tourism um, there's the experience, there's, there's huge cultural impact from, from visions of, of the Earth from space. Just look at that one photograph from Apollo 8, the, the, the blue Earth, the blue, blue marble, marble in the yes. distance. Um, the cultural impact of that and the impact of, of individuals seeing that for themselves and not just on a television screen or, or, or in a book um, is incalculable. As you've said, there are companies beyond Virgin Galactic involved in this business. Which ones are you most interested in? Well, there's, there's really two classes of company here. The ones that are like Virgin Galactic doing suborbital flights, where you get a few minutes of, of weightlessness, get to see the curvature of the Earth. Um, you, you qualify as, a, as a, an astronaut. But, Just. But, but by the skin of your teeth, really. Yes. So they go up about 60, 70 kilometers altitude and then fly back down. Uh, and there's also X-Core, um, and there's a company called Space Adventures, which I don't think they're building hardware themselves, but they're subcontracting hardware. And then there's the other class, the people who are perhaps a little bit more uh, adventurous, uh, certainly trying things that are a little bit further ahead, who are looking for full-scale orbital um, space tourism. So where you go up into orbit, perhaps go to, the, go to an equivalent of the International Space Station or some other form of space hotel. Um, and the ones behind that include companies like SpaceX, um, who are, you know, they are launching for NASA and, and the US government things to the space station already. And there are also a lot of people 
wishing to develop the infrastructure. For example, the UK government said mm. in July that it was putting forward a list of eight possible, possible space ports. So there's a lot else as well as the rocket makers behind this. Ab absolutely. And there's people who've been looking at the economics of space tourism for quite some time now. And if or when the technical challenges can be overcome, and then they are, as we've seen just recently, they are not small. Um, but if they can be overcome, then space tourism could be a hundred million, sorry, a hundred billion euro a year market, according to some of these predictions. Thanks very much, Dave. Absolutely. Thank you very much.